Now hey guys, welcome back to the channel and another Swiss 001 video. Now today we are uh, talking about a very very special aircraft and that is the Boeing 767. Yeah, for this one we are finally back in the X-Plane 11 flight simulator as well because uh, you know this plane is not in the newly released Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. That definitely makes sense but whatever, we have got the 767 in front of us and there's actually a specific reason for that. Now of course we all know the 767, it's a really one of a kind. Uh, you know, we are right now having the issue of having to replace this pretty old airliner and it came out in the 80s. Yes, 1982. And it's been a very, very much successful aircraft because it does actually serve a very, very profitable market. And that is like the mid-sized airliners that you can find. The 767 is perfectly between small and big, but it can still fly, you know, across oceans and all that stuff. So that's no problem. And there we go. We have just taken off this 767 out of here. This is actually Nice Airport. I'm very much sure that there's 767s flying here every single day. Maybe not every single day. There are not that many 767s flying around Europe, but that doesn't matter. This was a totally fine takeoff, of course. Now, yes, by the way, the 767 was Boeing's first long-haul aircraft that only had two engines instead of four, which, by the way, turned out to be the future of aviation. As you can see, we're pulling quite a lot of Gs on these wings. Now, this thing, it is definitely not perfect. It has quite a long history of very, very interesting, you know, acts Accidents, incidents, and even crashes, maybe even fatal ones. Oh, what has just happened? Yeah, this maneuver was probably not the best thing to do. We have lost our engines. This was actually not planned. I don't know why this just happened. Yeah, kind of reminds me of that 767 flight in 1983 where an Air Canada 767 had some miscalculations going on in the fuel and actually ran out of fuel above Canada and had to land on, I think, a card track in Canada. Uh, very interesting. And actually, it was a successful emergency landing. No one was hurt, so that is totally fine. Uh, I really d didn't mean to put the engines out here. I wanted to talk about another emergency that is also quite common with the 767. All right, we'll come back on board a perfectly working 767. We are right now approaching the airport of Nice. We're coming in hot and nice. Let's get this plane ready for landing. Gear down. Yeah, I said gear down. For some reason, the gear is not coming out. A perfectly working 767. Actually, this is what happened a few years back, I think in 2011, with a lot of Polish Airlines 767. Yes, indeed, landing gear just wouldn't come out at all, like genuinely at all, which was another very, very famous incident of the 767. Now, what the pilots on board the lot 767 actually did was uh, obviously land the plane, but without landing gear. And that is called a belly landing. You really have to land on the belly of this aircraft, which is uh, not that easy, is it? Yep, right now, we are getting the gear up warning. We can definitely hear it here in the background. It's quite annoying. Now it's even getting more annoying with another warning coming in. Too low. Gear. Too low. Gear. All right. Now for this landing, I will try to touch down as smoothly as possible. Let's just hope that I can somehow do this. Now we are going to touch down on the engines first, I guess, which is not that good, but okay. Come on. Touch down finally. We have to stop as well. There we go. We have a landing counter as well here, and it says butter. We touch down at 38 FPM, of course, in the minus range. And uh, oh, oh. It does not look like we're stopping. Oh. Alright, somehow I still managed to fail this landing. Okay. Now, yes, as I've already said, I managed to touch down as smoothly as possible. This was actually perfect. There we go. This would have definitely been a successful landing in real life. But for some reason, the plane just didn't want to stop. Probably there was a bug with the landing gear. And the simulator thought that the normal, you know, tires were still touching the ground. And so I wasn't braking as fast as uh, you do in real life. Of course, there are hundreds of videos of the 767 landing without the landing gear. It was definitely a very, very big thing. And, uh, you know, all the local spotters were around at that time. As you can see, the stopping actually went by pretty quickly. And, yeah, that's it. That, by the way, that happened in 2011. And as I've already mentioned, the engines obviously were dead after the flight. Because, again, you touch down on the engines first. And that was the thing that happened in 2012. Now, now there has recently been another incident of a 767 hand having some, you know, landing gear issues. Like here, um, the landing gear 
actually collapsed after touchdown. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, we luckily have that on video. We have Ikea in the background. That is a nice placement there. This is actually not a very good touchdown, uh, technically. Oh, a very hard one as well. And by the way, just as a pilot, I can say this is a very long landing, a very late touchdown, but that's just fine. What is not fine, though, is what happens after... Oh, 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 this is bad. As you can see, the main landing gear collapsed here. Uh, not very good. This is the aftermaths, by the way. Let's simulate this kind of landing as well. So, yes, as it seems, the 767 has some issues with its landing gear. And in general, we're having a lot of issues here. For example, the left engine has just stopped working. We are here in the failures menu, and we can, uh, of course, select the main landing gear to collapse completely on touchdown, which is, uh, you know, what happened here in real life with Omni Air. Again, that was like in August. Oh yeah, that landing is actually a lot smoother than the one of the Omni Air. But there we go, we have landed as well, that is no problem. Oh well, yeah, as you can see, we are definitely very low to the ground. Maybe the landing gear might have collapsed or something. Who knows? Yeah, okay, landing gear's dead. Okay, for some reason it didn't come out at all here on this landing. Yeah, the this model here in the flight simulator, it sucks. It's from Flight Factor, so of course it does. But that doesn't matter. Uh, this was at least a better belly landing than the one that we did before, but I guess you might wonder, well, how can that be? How can the landing gear of this plane suck so much? I mean, genuinely, there has been a few incidents already. Yeah, something that casually happens as well is just a nose gear collapsing, but that can happen with uh, quite a lot of planes actually, and it has before. You know, on the ramp, just standing there, you know, that is actually quite a common thing to happen. Yeah, we don't really have a true reason why the landing gear sucks so much. Obviously, the landing gear can only get stuck inside if there's something like an hydraulic issue, which was the problem with the lot incident. There was an hydraulic leak that occurred shortly after takeoff of the 767 by lot, which means that the landing gear and I think the flaps as well didn't come out properly. Now, by the way, that belly landing shouldn't have been done. A uh, later investigation indicated that a popped circuit breaker uh, just right off the first officer floor level would have enabled the electric motor for releasing the undercarriage and that would have actually, I think, saved the aircraft from doing a belly landing. But yeah, I mean, you know, it was a successful landing. Nobody was hurt with the exception of the 767, of course. But yeah, landing gear isn't always perfect. You know, these days we barely have to do any belly landings, but especially like smaller planes or planes like the Q400. I've also made a video about that one. These kind of planes have a lot more landing gear issues. It is so unlikely to have an accident like this, especially get hurt in the accident as well. You know, they are very epic, obviously. They, you don't see them happening every single day. But no, the 767 is perfectly fine to fly. Uh, this summer, actually, I was flying on a 757, no 767, because, you know, COVID-19, it kind of does make sense. But yeah, no worries at all. So yeah, guys, thank you for watching today's video. And I'll see you tomorrow. As always, good night. Bye.